everyone, this is Amy. I have a special video for you today. Now I usually do three videos a week, but this week I'm gonna make it four. This is a bonus video because Learn to Skate is starting at a lot of local rinks. If you're here for the nutrition and health content, you can skip this video if you're not interested. But if you have a child that's starting Learn to Skate either in group or private lessons, this video could really help you out. In all my years of teaching group and private lessons, I've learned a lot. And there's a lot of things that I think parents and skaters should know, especially now with all the additional protocols that we have to go through. So I'm giving you my perspective as a coach and probably what a lot of other coaches want you to know too. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, hit that red button down below, and then hit the bell icon so you don't miss a thing. And if you like this video, please be sure to give it a like so that I'll know to make more content just like this. Most ranks will send you an email with some guidelines and pointers, and what's in this email will really vary from rink to rink. So the most important thing is to arrive early. It's always gonna take you longer than you think to check in and get your skates on and make sure that they fit properly. Don't rush this. It's really important that your skates fit and are tied properly because you can actually get hurt if you go on the ice with the wrong size skate or a skate that's not tied properly. So just get there early and make sure you have enough time especially the first time. If you wind up getting on the ice late, your lesson is not going to be extended, especially now. If you are renting skates, it's really important to know that skate sizes are not necessarily the same as your street shoe size. In a Rydell skate, for example, I will take a six and a half, but in my street shoe, I'm a nine. So it could be a little different. And they also don't come in half sizes. So you'll want to size down and you want your skate to fit snugly. I tell my skaters it should fit like a Cinderella slipper. You don't wanna be sliding back and forth. There should only be just enough room to wiggle your toes, that's it. And one way you can really make sure that your skate fits properly is to wear thin socks. I know, I know, I know, it sounds so counterintuitive, it's a cold sport, but figure skaters wear very thin socks. And some hockey players don't wear socks at all. Some figure skaters don't wear socks at all. These are like a um, very thin denier knee high, a little thicker than like what you would find at the drugstore. And I'll put a link to these in the description down below. But you can also just wear tights under leggings and that works too. But don't wear thick socks because what happens with thick socks is they will bunch up and they will cause pain and discomfort they will also not allow that skate to fit around your foot properly. The other thing to know about skates is you want a recreational or a figure skate. And why is that? Figure skates and most recreational skates have a toe pick. This is not used for pushing or stopping like a roller skate, but it is useful when you're learning how to skate because it will stop you from falling forward. The other thing is if you're wearing hockey skates that don't have the toe pick, the blade on a hockey skate is more rounded. That's what we call the rocker. And a figure skate, while it is also rounded, is not as pronounced of a rock. So especially for the little ones, if they're trying to skate for the first time or the first time in a lesson, with a hockey blade, it can be very, very difficult for them. And they'll fall down a lot and they may get discouraged. So start with a figure skate style blade or a recreational style blade that has the toe pick and is a little longer in the back. It will help them from rocking around a lot and make it much easier for them to learn. You can always move to the hockey skate later on. The important thing, especially for the little ones is that they don't get discouraged right away. Now the skate should be laced up tightly. You really don't want a lot of wobble up here. So you want to make sure that these laces are pulled tight, pull them tightly and secure them tightly around the ankle. You should be able to bend your knee and flex forward a little bit without wobbling from side to side. If your child is walking on land and they're wobbling from side to side, either the skate is too big or the laces aren't tight enough. And you're actually better off starting with a rental skate than starting with your own skates. And the reason for that is a lot of the more affordable 
skates that you'll find on Amazon are not designed well and grow with me skates are definitely something that I, I don't suggest because the blade is always the same size. You can adjust the size of the boot, but you can't adjust the size of the blade. And the blade really needs to be a different size depending upon what size the boot is. So the boot is the upper part and the blade is, is the part that is on the ice. I have a link on my website to what to look for if you do wanna buy skates. I'll put that link down below. What should you wear? Well, athletic wear like leggings and, and zip up fleece are much better to wear than bulky clothes. So a lot of skaters will come for their first time skating, especially the little ones wearing snow pants with the straps. And there's a couple problems with this. The first thing is they're slippery. One of the very first things we teach children and adults for that matter is how to fall down and get up. So they will be falling down. And it's hard sometimes, especially for the younger kids to get up from the ice by pushing if the material on their pants slides when they push up. So you're much better off with a legging or a sweatpant that's well fitted. And I say well fitted because you don't want the child's pants to fall down. This goes for leggings too. It does happen. So make sure whatever it is they're wearing is the proper size for them. But stay away from snow pants with that slippery material. Also the shoulder straps on the snow pants can start to pull and that's really uncomfortable. So pull up pants that fit them well are what I recommend. You can always dress in layers. So for example, you can wear tights with the leggings over them. Now I said that we do teach falling down and getting up, which probably the number one thing that parents don't think about, especially if they've never had anybody in skating before, is gloves. We are indoors, but gloves are useful not only for keeping your hands warm, but to protect your hands. So when you fall down on the ice, you don't wanna put your hand on a cold slab of ice. This wearing inexpensive gloves like this that you can buy at a discount store and you can always buy it several pairs. And if you wanna buy them from Amazon, I'll put a link in the description down below. But just inexpensive gloves that you can slip on are better than winter gloves because again, the material in winter gloves or the hockey, the really big hockey gloves, that can be hard for a child to push off the ice when they're trying to get themselves up for adults too. So just get yourself a couple pairs of the thin fabric gloves that you can get very inexpensively either at a local discount store or the links I have below from Amazon. I suggest not using elbow pads or knee pads because they can inhibit movement. You won't be able to bend your knees enough if you're wearing the pads on your knees. So I suggest that you forego the knee pads or the elbow pads. But what I do suggest and recommend for all beginning skaters is that you wear a helmet, a good multi-sport helmet that fits well and does not move around forward and backward and side to side on your head is highly recommended because it's very easy to fall, especially when you're learning and hit your head on the ice. Also, children tend to gravitate to the walls and try to hold onto the wall and they can get hurt just from hitting their head on the wall. While I try to keep all my skaters away from the wall and I tell them it's made of lava and they'll melt if they touch it, it's always possible that a child will go towards the wall. So a helmet on the head can really protect them. But don't put anything under the helmet, like a hoodie or a hat, because that will affect the helmet's ability to work. And if the helmet is damaged or older, it's best to just replace it. Now with all the new health protocols, it's very possible that you will not actually be allowed in the rink. If you are allowed in the rink, many rinks right now have a designated viewing area for spectators. And if they don't, just try to stay where your child can't see you because a lot of times they perform better when you're not watching. Another thing that your coach and the other skaters will really appreciate is wearing a mask, but make sure the mat fits your child properly. It should be snug against the face, come down from the chin. The mask is not supposed to protect you or your child. The mask is supposed to protect others. So if you have a vent that allows it to breathe and has air flowing in and out, it doesn't really make the mask work. But if the mask is fitted 
properly against the face snugly with a, a fitted nose bridge and comes down from the chin and doesn't move around a lot. This is a good one from Under Armour. It may not fit all children. I do have a review of it and I'll put a link to that right here. But I do recommend this. It comes away from the mouth. These are things you wanna look for. But if your child has to keep pulling their mask up as it moves, that's not something you wanna have. So you wanna make sure that whatever mask they're using is fitted properly for them. Try a few different ones out at home. Make sure the child is comfortable wearing it. This is really something that, that the coaches and the other skaters and the other skaters' parents will really appreciate. Even if it's not required, it is recommended. Try to schedule other activities like swimming or dancing or t-ball on days that are different from skating. You don't want your child to come home from school, run from one activity to the next, and just be exhausted by the time they get to skating or their other activity. So try to separate this all out a little bit. So just try to schedule one activity a day. Make sure they eat and go to the bathroom before they come out on the ice. It does happen. I've seen accidents happen on the ice. So just make sure your child has used the bathroom before they come to class so they don't have to leave, especially since most rinks don't allow you to be close by. We can't send them to the bathroom on their own and we can't go in with them. We're not allowed to under safe sport. So it's really important that your child has gone to the bathroom before they get to the rink and that they're not hungry. If your child is sick, stay home. You can contact the skating director or the rink and tell them and ask them if there's a makeup class available. A lot of rinks are doing special things right now that they wouldn't normally do with cancellation policies and makeups. So check with the rink. But if your child has any symptoms, runny nose, coughing, sneezing, whether it's coronavirus or not, please stay home. We would really appreciate that. Also check your child's temperature before they get to the rink. Most rinks now are doing a temperature check before you come in. So it's better to know before your child gets there if they're running a temperature. And if they are, just stay home. And again, contact the rink or the skating director or your child's coach and ask them if there's any way to do a makeup. Make sure your child knows about physical distancing and that they should be six feet away from your coach as well as the other skaters at all times. As much as they might want it reach out and touch another skater or their coach or give somebody a hug or a high five. They really shouldn't do that right now. So make sure that your child knows this. So I hope you found this video helpful and you know better what to expect from your first time skating. Remember, if you did like this video, please give it a like down below. And if you wanna see more videos from my channel on this or any other subject, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you won't miss a thing. This is Amy, I'll see you real soon, bye.